All right. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the the June uh, Torch and Lair community meeting. Um, I, I actually didn't have too much time to prepare this, so we're a little light on agenda. Um, but let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay. So uh, I think most of this is um, think most of this is sort of an evolution of what we did. Uh, last last week on I mean sorry last month and so I'm just gonna walk over some of the uh, big changes that users uh, might be interested in and uh, just a reminder we've refactored the community uh, communication uh, channels quite a bit so the first man Monday of the month we have the community meeting that's right now and on the other Mondays we have a developer hour which is um, you know doesn't really have a formal agenda is not recorded and is a great place for just sort of uh, technical discussions about the project especially for, for people who are like in the code so to speak we have a discord which is um, pretty active you can see the link here um, we also have an online forum and um, the, just the full details of what's on this slide can be found um, in our readme on github so uh, please check that out um, yeah, just breaking down some of the statistics um, in, the, in the last uh, few uh, uh, last month, we've got 62 commits, um, looking pretty similar to uh, last month, and so um, yeah, getting a lot of contributions from ac across the um, industry. Um, all right, let's uh, jump right into the updates. I think some of the presenters for these are not um, not present. Um, so I'll, I think I'm just going to go ahead and present most of these myself. Uh, we've added a ton of new ops in the last month. So it, here's the, the list and, uh, it's, these are the ones needed for the, the training and the, um, larger variety of, uh, of models from Torchbench. So great work to everybody who contributed to that. Uh, we've, we've added to our end-to-end -end test suite um, uh, some uh, BERT training workloads. Uh, and so those are now, we can iterate on those quickly, we've got those running. Um, so for users, we added the torchmlr.compile API has added some, some new features. So we basically have this uh, thing, um, type called tensor placeholder that lets us um, annotate dynamic sizes easily uh, if you if you need that. And you can also use uh, use tracing um, to uh, basically use torch.trace instead of torch.script internally to capture the graph. Um, yeah, we got a contribution from Xilinx to uh, be able to turn off the opti compositions. Uh, so that's useful if your backend needs to see like ops completely uh, in their original form. And uh, so we still are thinking about how, what's the best way to expose this uh, to users because, uh, you know, some backends might want some decompositions, other might want others. Uh, right now we just have this blanket option, but we'd really like feedback on you know what your requirements are so there's a lot of decomposition like work happening in upstream pytorch in various forms and um and so that decomposition work is um uh we don't want to be like redundantly implementing decompositions that are also available upstream and so this ties into kind of our longer um alignment with uh, with upstream PyTorch and making sure that all of that is not duplicated. Um, Yi, Yi did an awesome change that makes the end-to-end -end testing framework parallel. And at least on my machine, this is like a 10x speed up. And I think most people with sort of reasonably beefy uh, machines are also going to see some huge speed ups on that. So when you're just iterating on changes, that'll be great. And I think that that is uh, at the end of this quick uh, quick community meeting. Um, 
Were there, was there any discussion or Q&A or anybody who wants to introduce themselves uh, this time? Oh yeah, well, I've been here for the last couple of meetings, but I haven't introduced myself, but okay. I'm Henry, I'm from Cerebris, and I'm working on the LTC part of Torture MLIR. Thanks, Henry. And I think, Antonio, did you introduce yourself last time? So th these two are, have been doing great work on LTC. Uh, not last time, uh, but I think the first time that I presented LTC, I introduced myself, but I can do it again. Uh, yeah, so my name is Antonio. I'm one of the machine learning frameworks engineers at uh, Cerebris. Uh, and I, along with Henry, have been working on the lazy tensor core integration for um, Torch mm -hmm. Do you guys want to give a quick update on where that's at? I think you guys recently hit some milestones, and due to the last minute nature of these slides, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get something from you. Yeah, so right now, I think the next goal is to try to get uh, the BERT model working. So previously, we had MNIST, but we're trying to get Hugging Face BERT working. And for that, we had to add a couple more op uh, add support for a couple more ops so i so the next stage is to try to get this working on the reference backend as well uh, so right now we have it emitting some mlir uh we, we're also debugging some numeric issues uh right now we're just so the way that it works on LTC is that we have uh, we're building a, a just-in-time graph uh, just like on the torch grid backend uh, uh in pytorch and then from there, we're feeding it into the infrastructure in Torch MLIR to generate the MLIR. So right now, we're just validating that the, the just-in-time graph is working fine. And we're adding op support in order to make it uh, make that part work. But then after that, we need to verify that the MLIR works. Uh, in order to do that, we need to lower to Linalge and run on the reference backend. So that's kind of the, the next goal after the current issues are fixed. And hopefully, we're able to get that done sometime this month, as, assuming there's no uh, no other major issues. Awesome, thanks. Uh, so when you said we get BERT running, did you mean BERT, you meant BERT training, correct? Uh, yeah, BERT training. Do you guys already have the forward pass running and uh, we, we, validated or to your liking? Uh, we we have the forward and backward graphs generated, but we haven't lowered it down to Linalge to execute okay. on the reference backend. So right now we're just running under the assumption that whatever uh, the whatever torch MLIR is outputting uh, matches what's what's in the just in time graph. So as long as that's as that's if that's accurate, then mm -hmm. it should be working fine. But we haven't validated it yet. Yeah, it should be hopefully uh, if we're doing our job properly. Uh, thanks for that update. Uh, Siraj, I noticed when I was coming through the commits that there hasn't been too much um, toaster related activity in the last month. Uh, do you guys have any updates on your end or things you haven't pushed upstream? Yeah, actually, I have a, we have something like half a dozen comments pending internally, and it's mostly stuff from Anup since he has kind of left. He, he had been a team for six months deployment in our team, and he has gone back to his original team. But there's a bunch of work that essentially completely closes up the functional requirements for bird static. And as I mentioned, what's really blocking us right now is that we can't take a statically configured bird and still find the entire graph statically exposed. And particularly, that one thing at the very beginning where it doesn't seem to be able to define something as simple as the split vector, which is supposed to be seven elements and all static values or ones really, it just doesn't generate properly. And that's what's yeah. something else in the way. But yeah. To try to get around that, I plan to go ahead and just release all the other pieces like uh, the SGLU embedding and a few other ops uh, which I want to put out separately just so I don't overwhelm you or you with a very large default change log. Awesome. So yeah, so um, I, I think a few folks have been hitting that issue with the shape inference. Um, and I don't know where that strange. Um, op is coming from that kind of calculates the size yeah, in a weird yeah. way. But um, I, I think we are we definitely have somebody, are going to have somebody looking at that at high priority because it's blocking other Thank cubes. You. So it shows up in all the boot things. So it's probably some kind of standard front end thing across all of the hugging face board models. Yeah. Yeah, it's very strange because they like, calculate a tensor size on device. And I don't know yeah, yeah, yeah. what, like, maybe they're <laughs> calling like torch.add. Uh, I, I don't even know how you would 
how you would get that. But uh, yeah. Yep. Hey, Shabash. Hello. Did you guys um, ever uh, update a bug with some of the QPyTorch? Um, uh, oh, I, yeah, that, that's a good question. So um, I want I needed to um, uh, I needed to double check that. Run that with our ML team folks, and I've done so. And the issue is um, almost ready. I'll push it up uh, today. Okay, cool, awesome, thanks. Yeah, that that's gonna really help us to collaborate on that. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I, I was able to, um, you know, get the, try to lower it, try to compile it for Tosa, got some errors, and, um, you know, have all the logs and steps to reproduce um, documented. So I'll add all the things to the issue. Oh, that's great. Please feel free to post it, and we'll be happy to help you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, John, we, we had a kind of a short agenda today. Um, so we're kind of at the discussion part at the end. Um, do you have any topics you wanted to talk about? Uh, sorry, I, I don't have. Sorry, we've been late. Oh, Just no. Checking what's, um... No worries. I'll post the recording uh, in, in a little bit. OK. By the way, where do you guys get the link? I, I think I, I had the wrong link for this uh, in meeting. Oh, yeah, there, there was a little bit of a um, snafu about how I originally scheduled the meetings. Um, and so the there's a, a forum post here called like refactoring recurring meetings. Um, should be linked from the readme uh, on the on the page that has the right meeting invite. Okay, awesome, thanks. Oh, wait, just a second. Why is this? Wait. No, this is the link that the, that was not working. I, I oh, was actually okay. trying to this one. Okay, well, this is why I'm a software engineer and not a um, person who has to do calendar meetings for a living. Let me see if I can refactor this. GKH. All right, yeah, I'll I'll um I'll figure this out. Um, thanks for pointing that out to me. I sorry about that. No problem. Thanks again. Yeah, it's okay. I had posted down Discord with the correct meeting link. I think I sent everybody the right way. Okay, thanks. Hey, Bob, how's it going? Not bad, good to see folks. Yeah, we kind of had a short agenda for today, so I'll post the recording and um, uh, for if you wanna catch up on what happened, but we're kind of uh, closing out now. Um, do you have any topics, Bob, for before we end? No, no, should be good. Uh, the thing I brought up last time, I just put into a PR so we can go from there. Awesome, cool, thanks for posting that. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining. Uh, and uh, I would look forward to seeing you at the developer hours. We can dive into more technical details um, and uh, ne next month's community meeting. All right. Bye.